say yeah. yeah. Hold up. Somebody say hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, break out if you ready. Check it out, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Woo, hey, check it out. Now we can take it from the T O P again. T O P. T O P. Do it right. Break out. Could you do it right this time for yeah. us? Let's just wrap a little bit. Could you do it right? Bit. Let's just wrap a little break bit. Break out. Just take it from the top. Break out. Let our reggae play one more time. Break your break out. Nope. Yeah, one more time. Do it up, y'all. Go. Come on. One time. Check it out, check it out. Just cause it's name, rock the house. I'm sure enough, everybody gonna turn it out. Well, okay, you rock well, cause it rocks so well. And every time you hear my name, girl, it rings a bell. Well, I'm literally on the scene making history with all the fly girls yelling, take me. We rock the mice with the master time. What? We're on time. We're masterminds. We hypnotize when we run down the rhyme. Therefore, fly guys, I'm the best we can tell. Now listen to the story that we're proper. Now this guarantee is so tough to run. We said it once. We said it twice. We're proving to y'all we're better than night. Uh, uh. Check it out. Check it out. Party people oh, in the place. New York. I want Young to rock the world. Uh. Oh. Check it out. Shout out. Cause the sun won't shine, the rain won't stop We oh, got this out, you call punk rock Just yeah. get about the jail, stop the haps and fall We're two DJs, one four, plus oh, one two oh. People out there, we want y'all to know We are the ones with the magical show We're two yeah, DJs, the yeah. five MCs uh, uh, Four other fellas, plus yeah, one is yeah. me We're here to please everybody out there uh, Forget about uh, the problems, get about your hands Just it. get on the floor, don't you be shy do You it. can do it too, just give it a try do To the it. people out there, we want the best Oh my god, that is such a fantastic uh, throwback in time. You are tuned in to Hip Hop in Action. I'm Jeremy Beaver, CEO and founder of Listen Vision and the Hip Hop Museum with my DJ, the one, the only... Beat of the Boy Wonder. Man, did you see that old grainy VHS video? I, I saw it. That thing was awesome. Makes you think how far times we've came since then. Wow. We've come Woo! so far, and today couldn't be more perfect because our first female guest on the show is the first female rapper in hip-hop. Dope. <laughs> Dope is right. So this is this is a historic show. There's a lot of uh, tea that we're going to be sipping on a, uh, during our interview with the one and only. Put your pinkies in the air. While put you your pinkies okay. in the air right. while you uh, sip your tea with MC Shaw Rock of the Funky Four Plus One. This is going to be one of the greatest interviews that we have ever done. I promise you. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, but before we get to the world's first female MC. We're going to do a little segment we call, ready, DZ? Today in Hip Hop! We, we did it. We got to shake up the screen or something next time we do that. You gotta that was good. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Like like an MTV show or something. Anyways, okay. Let's get right into it because we got a lot of show today. Uh, we always love hip hop artists. And one of my favorite illustrators and artists uh, that specializes in hip hop like of all time is a guy by the name of Dan Lish out there in the UK. And this is something he did for Boogie Down Productions, which is obviously KRS-One and D-Nice and Kenny Parker and Scott LaRock and DJ Red Alert down there in the right-hand corner. Let's just stay on that. That is amazing, and he just uh, started uh, digitally coloring these, so that's all uh, kind of digital the way he colors it, I believe, but he does everything in ink by hand. But man, that is amazing. Shout out you, Dan Lish. Uh, in other news, show news coming up in December, December 19th, the one and only CeeLo Green will be at Howard Theater here in Washington, D.C. I love CeeLo Green. I love all of Goody Mob, actually. He definitely stands out. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, people named Green, Danny Green and Q-Tip have an album coming out. Sorry, Danny Green. Danny Brown. <laughs> I've smoked too much weed today. No, just kidding. Whoa, damn. That, that scared the shit out of me. Uh, Danny Brown and Q-Tip. Listen, I love both of those guys. I can't wait to hear what an album from the, from them sounds like. Uh, that, that could be really cool. Uh, DJ Devious, the man who has fabricated the Death Row Records uh, electric chair in the Hip Hop Museum collection and America's largest boombox here at Listen Vision has also designed this custom vinyl that was signed by the Sugar Hill Gang and Scorpio uh, and uh, looks like at the bottom maybe Grandmaster Kaz was there as well and that amazing hat is from our sponsor. Who's our sponsor, B-Dub? None other than True Heads Clothing, man. If you always like these good old snapbacks, the fittest, the kangos that we are, and the buckets that we always wear each and every Friday, make sure you check us out. True Heads Clothing. That's True Heads with a Z. Clothing.com. True Heads Clothing, we are now even featuring. DZ, if we could get a quick pan over into the corner of all the hats you could come to Listen Vision and actually pick up. You zoom in there. Yep, the True Heads hats. They are here right next to the boom box. So devious and Neil Taylor have come together to make one of the greatest hip hop displays ever. Fat lace hats plus a 12 foot boom box. That's just some rare shit. All right, in uh, other, other stuff today in hip hop, this is just stuff I find on the internet. I love whoever illustrated this. I love this depiction of Do the Right Thing. Do the Right Thing is one of my favorite movies of all time. And this, this picture, this illustration really uh, encapsulates the movie well. DZ, do we have that picture? Look at that. Wouldn't that be make for a dope poster? God, I love that. Whoever did that, we're going to find you and we're going to give you credit because that's super dope. And then here on the set, uh, over here, we got uh, one of the greatest hip hop photographers of all time, Ernie Panaccioli. Uh, he has a picture that's featured in our news section today, but he also has this book that's out on Amazon, so you can go get it. You can also get it at erniepanacioli.com. Uh, and he is just a fantastic human being and an amazing photographer who took a, uh, a, a really amazing picture that we're going to get to a little bit later in our program. Uh, speaking of programs, Hip Hop Gods Radio is one of my favorite podcasts, and they're on episode number 441. And uh, the host, Flatline, does a really great job of curating, you know, kind of rare and different throwback tracks. Uh, and some of those tracks uh, feature my man, Busy B. So shout out Busy B and his new track, uh, Sticky Green, which is probably, I think, on that podcast there. You should go uh, check that out on Mixcloud, the app Mixcloud. Also, congratulations to uh, another amazing hip-hop photographer, Joe Conzo, who is celebrating there, having uh, beaten cancer and taking his last rounds of chemo. Uh, shout out to you, Joe. Congratulations. And we're so thankful that uh, you know, you're know you doing well and you've pulled through that, that horrible situation. So shout out, Joe Conzo. Congratulations to you. And uh, thank you, uh, Cora. Cora Brown, uh, Grandmaster Kaz's wife, for sharing those photographs on Facebook so we can all uh, congratulate them. And another sh uh, song that was actually featured on Hip Hop Gods Radio that I noticed is a new song called LL Cool J, which is by Raskas and Snoop Dogg. So I just, man, I just love when these legendary hip hop artists 
uh, pay homage to other legendary hip hop artists, even more legendary, maybe. You know, so a song called LL Cool J by Rascast featuring Snoop Dogg. Go check it out. Uh, I think it's on Bandcamp. Uh, look at this amazing um, graffiti piece. Rest in peace to uh, DJ Chaos. This is an unbelievable graffiti mural that was done by Snipe ESB Oustem One out in Alkmaar, Alkmaar, Netherlands. So shout out you for you know uh, making this incredible piece for my brothers, uh, El De Sensei and Tame One of the Artifacts crew. And of course, rest in peace to DJ Chaos. Thank you, Snipe ESB. Uh, another amazing artist, got some great artists on the show today, is a guy by the name of Sherwin Banfield, who created this Cypher in Queens exhibition. And these are three amazing uh, kind of like hip-hop totem poles that you see there pictured. They're going to be featured at the Queens Public Library Thursday, September 19th. So you should definitely go and check out those, um, you know, works of art that Sherwin made. A really beautiful tribute to those artists, Jam Master J and Prodigy. And um, can you pull that picture back up? I'm sorry, I have to do this right. Jam Master J, Prodigy, and who is the third one that's in that picture? DZ. Oh, he deleted it. Okay, well, anyway, shout, shout out to Sherwin Banfield. Okay, in other uh, hip-hop news today in hip-hop, you got it? Okay, there we are. Oh, right, Fife Dog. God, see? That's why I had to bring it back up. So it's Fife Dog, Jam Master J, and Prodigy that Sherwin Banfield has memorialized and immortalized in those kind of hip-hop totem poles. Uh, the World B-Boy Championship is coming up. So the 2019 World B-Boy Battle Championship will be at the Tribeca Performing Arts Center December 21st. Go check that out. I love watching videos online of just insane B-Boys. And last week we had, you remember uh, B-Dub, that guy who did the crazy headstand with the hula hoop? That was amazing, right? Yeah, that was amazing. That was amazing. Okay, last thing is that the Wu-Tang and American Saga has premiered on Hulu. Okay, so if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Everybody's saying it's really, really good. I unfortunately haven't seen it myself. And I hear they have Dave East playing Method Dave Man. Dave East is playing Method Man. That's right. Wow. Okay. There's a bunch of good actors in it. So go check that out. That sounds really good. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to get to Hip Hop's first female MC. But don't take my word for it. Nope. Listen to the words of Daryl McDaniels. Uh, that is DMC of Run DMC. And uh, he had some pretty amazing things to say about Shah Rock, the very first MC of hip hop. So stay tuned. She'll be with us right after this break. Peace. People have no idea of of a secret, and I'm a, I'm gonna let the secret go. I think this is probably the third time I talked about this. If you listen to my record of Runs House, and if you listen to Together Forever. A couple of his songs, too, but Run's House stands out. When you hear me go, my name is DMC, C, all-time great, great, bust the most run, the echo chamber changed my life because on those cassette tapes that I was buying back in the days, I would save my allowance up, and I would save my allowance up to get, you know, the Cold Crush Battle Tape versus Fantastic Five, Cool Mo D versus Busy B when they had that classic battle. And then Cold Crush Tapes was really big, but also... Um, you know, I went to Rice High School, 124th Street in Lenox. So I was going to school with guys that was, you know, living in the Bronx in Manhattan. And they would bring tapes of, you know, like Bam Bada, Jazzy J and Red Alert and the Jazzy Five Live over break beats. And they had this echo chamber thing. And then one day I got to hear something that changed a guy's life. I heard this female MC from the group Funky 4 Plus 1, Four Dudes MC, she was the plus one. Her name was Shah Rock. And they had a record out. They had um they had the Mexican out and then they had um they had a couple of records out on Sugar Hill and Enjoy and stuff like that. But one day I heard something that wasn't Shah Rock's record. And it was a tape of her rhyming over seven minutes of funk. And she said some crazy dope rhymes that is better than 85% of MCs out today. But this is what was um, life-changing in me. 
She was rhyming over don 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 don, and she was rhyming with the echo chamber, and she said to all of you, "My name is Sha Sha," and it said, I was, "I was like, what the hell? What is this echo chamber thing?" She said to all of you, "My name is Sha Sha. I'm not a millionaire. I don't have a car, car. But here's one thing I want y'all to know: I'm a good loving person from a long time ago. Go one of a kind, kind rocking my. I was like. I stood there in my house and rewinded that tape over for three days straight. I couldn't believe how incredible this girl was with the echo chamber. Then comes along and I get a chance to go make records. And I was like, yo, Jay, I got to be like Shaw Rock. I got to have that echo chamber. Shaw Rock is genre changing. So Shaw Rock, I give it up to you. You and the Cold Crush 4 are the reason why DMC is the king of rock. When I heard that echo chamber was shot rock, and her rhymes was dope. And she was like, she was doping in the dudes back then. Because what was good about Funky 4 Plus 1 was they rhymed about, you know, their sneakers and taking the subway train and going to school and what they would eat for lunch. Like, they rhymed about stuff that was relevant to that particular age group of hip hop. But Sean Rock, I got to give the props to her. She's not only a legendary pioneer icon female MC. You dudes need to take lessons from Shaw Rock. She changed my life. To this day, the reason why me and Run did party people, people. You do um ill, chill, chill, echo chamber because of Shaw Rock. We love you. Wow. wow. Look, oh wow. man. I the one, the only Shaw Rock is with us. How are you? Listen. Shout out. Shout out to hip hop in action. For allowing me to come on and tell my side of the story, you know, and, oh. and, I, and I'm glad I'm honored. I got to say I'm honored. Much respect to y'all and much respect to what you have did Germany for hip, hip hop and what you will continue to do oh. for hip hop in order to enlighten people who don't know the truth. Yes. Yes. Don't well, know listen, the truth. Well, listen, we have you on for kind of two purposes. So and we were honest with you about this. There's, there's two purposes. OK. The one, Talk to me. the the first purpose that that we're gonna get to, and we have plenty of time. We got you know a full fifty minutes with you, forty five oh, minutes. Okay, that's nothing. Okay, that's nothing. But I will tell you, the first purpose is to reassert and and, and reiterate kind of you know your legacy and your place right. in hip hop. That's the first part. The second part, and and equally as if not more important, is having at least a forty five minute interview with you so that you. Years and decades and centuries from now, when the kids are looking at not textbooks, whatever they're looking at, okay, they understand the real true story of how it went down because we are Absolutely. here, you know, to preserve and commemorate the legacy of legends like yourself that changed the course of humanity. So two two parts, and we always start off with the very same first question. So we're gonna go very, very back to you as a child. What is the very first not hip hop song? Because you, you know, damn near created hip hop. But what's the first kind of song or music experience you had that made you want to get into music and even get on the microphone? Well, Jer Jeremy, I'll tell you, my my parents, my mom and my stepfather were connoisseurs of music. So I was brought up, you know, and I got to tell you, I, I was born in the South. I was born in Wilmington, North Carolina. Yeah. I left when I was eight years old and traveled back and forth every summer to Buford or Wilmington, North Carolina, because my mom wanted to get us out of New York for the summer. And so during that time in um, North Carolina, before I migrated to New York City, I was introduced to Isaac Hayes, you know, um, uh, who else? Um, James Brown, Elvis Presley, um, Michael Jackson. These are the people that, you know, I watched and listened to growing up, you know, the, the Beatles, you know, and, and I think um, with that said in the South, it sort of kind of allowed me to appreciate different genres of music and respect the music of another nationality or whatever. It doesn't matter where the music came from. It's just that I use that music as a way to be able to um how can I say, deliver my rhymes when I became that MC, And also, as far as like performance, as you know, just really connecting to the crowd. So I, I use all the influence of my um, dealings in the South coming up to the North 
as a journey for me to be able to say, you know, I respect these musicians and they taught me a lot, you know? Well, what brought you specifically from, you know, uh, Now, North if Carolina? I tell you the whole thing, you know I'm doing my movie Luminary Icon. So let me just say that we migrated, my family migrated from New York, from Wilmington, North Carolina to New York City. So I don't want to get a whole movie away. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, okay. No, yeah. but that's, that's, so that's fair. Right. And so, in, the, in the early, uh, late, late 60s, 60s so, early 70s. And when you went to New York, you know, you settled in the South Bronx. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what? Well, when I first got to New York, like in 19, when I first got to New York, like in 1970s, um, 70s, um, 71, I lived in Harlem. Then okay. I moved to the Bronx. Okay. Then I moved back to Harlem. And then I moved back to the Bronx. So and I was all over the place. My mom was like a nomadic mover, you know, <laughs> that would had, had us going. If she didn't think that apartment was the right thing for her or if the super wasn't, you know, taking care of the water, or the doors or the locks or this and that, she'll, she'll leave. She'll be like, forget it. I ain't paying no rent. I'm gone. I'm out. I and see you. And, and then, then what she'll made do you, that in the next one. You know? and, and then so that's a lot of moving for a young child. What, what effect do you mm -hmm. think that had on you wanting to make music? Well, it didn't have any effect at all, and I'll tell you why, because, you know, later on, my mother had became a single parent. So the thing is, is that she was always nourishing, always about her business, always about her kids. So I never need, I was never, and, and I had, had like a, a one brother and two more other sisters. And with my mom being that single parent, we never wanted for anything. It's like when I'm doing the movie, you know, they was like, okay, so, you know, did this happen, this happened? I say, listen. You know what I'm saying? I I I was brought up in a in a um in the Bronx in the South Bronx, but my mom kids were her main focus, and so um, all the moving around was only for us. I never you know I never really like thought that anything was wrong with doing. I didn't see anything wrong because we still had that loving, caring you know type of, of you know affirmation from my mom. So no, you know it, it wasn't nothing for us at all. And then, so what do you think pushed you to want to get on a microphone? Like, at what age can you remember is the first time you got on a microphone? Okay, so Jeremy, let's go back. My introduction to hip hop culture is a B girl. Right. For whatever people that don't know about, you know, uh, uh, B girl, that's a break dancer. Later on, right. they, they call it break, break dancer. And I right. reference that just like I'm an MC. MC. I reference rapper because some people don't know in hip hop culture what an MC is. Yeah. And then some people has changed the, the spelling of MC as well. You yeah. know, so some people don't really know. So my thing is that I started off in 1976 as a B girl, break dancer, nomadic B girl, break dancer. Travel all over the, the Bronx, you know, to anybody that was playing music, you know, at that time of was playing those break beats. So I was a B girl first in 1976. Now at the end of 77, you know, you got a select crew of MCs coming on the game. Cause now before 76, you know, um, they said it was B boys out there, you know, whatever, but they weren't doing it to the way that maybe like around about 77, 78, you know, they were break dancing. There were probably MCs out there, but they were not MCing in the format of hip hop, there's a difference. There's a different way that a, a MC rhymes as opposed to, you know, MC in hip hop. It, it, you know, it, and anybody that's in, in, in hip hop, they know what I'm talking about. It's a different format for hip hop, the way that you rhyme. So you if, what if, I mean? as, a so, B, as a B girl, when you're going around and, and you're going around the city dancing, just for you, what age was that? I was, um, I had just, um, I was uh, in junior high school. I was in junior high school, so it was like about 14, 15, you know, years old. But I still had a curfew, and I still had to get into the house, you know, at a certain time. So when I uh, turned 16, and I was headed up to uptown to be able to go to high school, you know, I w really was able to travel around, you know, to the different venues, and um, you know, and just see the b boys that was out there at that time breakdancing. Now. You know, it was only a select flu, and you had a lot of people. Most of us knew each other that was on the streets in the Bronx. Right. You know, and this is how we would be able to tell who was who, who was rocking, who had the best moves, or who was doing what. Because most of us were nomadic B-girls B or B-boys that travel around 
to see who was doing what. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, B-boys and B-girls, before we go any farther, I want to give a big shout out to uh, one of the original uh, B-boys who has a big, uh, who's a big fan of yours, uh, Fuji, wow. AG's brother, Fuji. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fuji. Fu Fuji. Fuji knows a lot about the B-girls and the B-boys. He is like bona fide B-boy. Well, you know? speaking of a bona fide b-boy, he took some amazing uh, pictures of you, uh, and we're just oh. showing them now on screen. I don't think you can see them on Skype, but what I, an I can see it. I can see it. Oh, okay, what an incredible photographer that uh, Fuji is, and also what a great guy. I was hanging out with him and AG when when and Andre was in town, and you know, just he, he knows the history. You know what I mean? You guys, he does. Live, you he guys does. live the he history. Does. Yeah. So he sends his love and shout out Fuji for those amazing shots. Thank if you, you. need a, a great you. photographer, go check out uh, AG's brother Fuji, who's here in the DMV area. Much respect. Much respect. So, you know, that's kind of bold for a, a, someone in their young teens, especially a female, to be traveling around the city uh, to just to be girl. Where, where would you find out about the different jams? How would you know where to go? Well, word of mouth word of mouth and if you knew that that there was a dj you know um a certain time a lot of times they will announce that they'll be there the next week or you would just be word of mouth if you have friends and no friends that were um saying listen they're going to give a jam you know park jam today then you travel wherever they were so most of the time it was word of mouth i know when i started out like in um 76 as a as a b-girl there was no flyers that were out there to say that you know they were going to you know perform you know uh in, in any parts you know um i didn't see any when i was out there but okay. i know that you know in, in late 77 you know when i became that first female mc of the hip-hop culture <laughs> You know, um, right. the beginning of 78, the Flyers had start, you know, were, were Well, let's, t let's talk about that moment. That That's the moment Then I tr I jumped. Sorry, I jumped the gun. But that's, no, the, ex that's the exact moment I wanted to pinpoint. What mm -hmm. made you, as a B-girl, want to grab the mic? Was there anyone in particular that influenced you to do that? Well, let me say this. Now, when you're talking about the end of 77, and I'm really talking about the end of 77, even though you had some of the elements that were in place prior to um, 1977 and 1976, and I use um, really like, um, for me, B-Girl 76 and then, you know, the 77 was really like the onset of hip-hop MCs. And what I mean by hip-hop MCs, I'm talking about the rhyming format. I'm talking about the beats. I'm talking about the break beats that we used to use to become MCs, right? right? And so you're talking about late 77, you know, uh, 78 is when you had a select few, you know, that that were, that was coming on the scene. And so for me, um, late 77 was when, you know, I became the first female MC of hip hop. And how I know that is because as a B girl, I was out there on them streets. And so for anybody that had said, okay, yo, was here, you wasn't here. Um, I was in this part of the town. That's why you didn't know who I was. I was a B-girl first. And everybody that is out there in New York from Tony, you know, to Fuji, until um, let's say Charlie Rock, which is a part of the Zoo Nation. I, I used to run into them, you know, B-girl, you know, in, in the streets. So when I say that I am the first female MC of hip hop culture, is when all the elements were coming together. I was on that street, helping to push the culture, the culture. And for every single body that was out there with me, and this is why you see, um, you know, a lot of people um, like that's on Facebook, you know, or Instagram. I just got back on, um, and I she said, I just got back on social media only because I was coming out with this movie and I had set up like the accounts maybe like three years ago, Instagram, and I just got back on. And so when you, when people see that I am on, they're riding with me because they know what I did for hip hop culture in the Bronx and also New York City. Well, and so as the first female MC of hip hop culture, I was on that, I was on that ground, you know, from the front line, you know what I'm saying? To push this culture forward and all the elements that was there. Now, I won't say I did it by myself because there were guys there too. A lot, lot of the guys there were just like on the ground doing it. But what I can tell you is that I was the female that was holding it down. And yes, you may have seen other people, other females that may have gotten on the mic. 
but Shah Rock held New York City down. Shah Rock is the first female MC of hip hop cho- um, culture because I took the wheel and made sure that I helped move this culture forward before records. Well, we want to we want we want to substantiate that, and so we we got a clip. <laughs> From, you yeah, know, what, what, you gonna, what you got? What you got? Okay, so this is this is. I mean, this is why you know I hit you up immediately because you know as yeah. historians we want to make sure we tell the story factually and correctly. Right. So this right. is the earliest footage that we could find, um, and we couldn't find any other female MCs before night. So this is a night. And you're wrong. So this is a this is a '78. Uh, video clip now even though you know you were doing it in 77 there's no footage Mm -hmm. you know there's audio from then but here's the first so we're going to play this so shout out to timothy c brown senior oh okay okay, who put this uh two minute clip together uh let's just watch this this is from 1978 uh dz you got that clip of uh timothy 1978 footage okay here we go timothy c brown shout you out for uh archiving this footage check it out Hey, what's up? My name is Timothy Curtis Brown Sr. We're here today to discuss some historical Smithsonian uh, 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 footage that was shot back in uh, the winter of 78. There was a group back then called the Brothers Disco, an MC group. The original member of the group was K.K. Rockwell. He went by the voice of K.K. Rockwell. It was DJ Breakout and DJ Baron and the voice of K.K. Rockwell. The Brothers Disco. They added on some members, Keith Keith, Shah Rock, and Raheem, the original Funky Four. And I also have footage of them actually performing as a group on stage with mics in hand actually performing. That's K.K. Rockwell, Keith Keith, Shah Rock, and Raheem, the original Funky Four. It's history. Nobody else out there to this day can produce any live. Right? Raw- they don't know my story. Are y'all listening? They oh, know yes. my story. The only thing that they know is maybe, um, you know, they know me from the Funky Four, that's the joint. Or they may know me for, you know, being the first female MC with a record deal, an authentic MC with a record deal, right? And also in 1979 was the year that uh, um, the onset of records where a lot of people, uh, not a lot, a few people made records, but the Funky Four plus one was there in 1979. The only difference between me and anybody else or any other female in 1979 is that I didn't come on the scene as a person that just made, you know, a rap song. And this is not to take anything from anybody else. It's just that sometimes, you know, I don't even like explaining it a lot because it's like, I don't like bragging. Okay. And, and when I talk to people, I don't want it to seem like I'm bragging or I'm taking anything away from mm-hmm. anybody. But Jeremy, this is the problem. It's because some count on me not to tell what really went down. And so for everything that I did, that I laid down on this, uh, you know, for the culture, right. it's like... Well, it's and, and, and please, please, everybody that's listening out there, please, I'm saying this humble, is that I cannot allow them to tell y'all that this is what they did before me when I was on that when I was on that front line. Right. I did every single thing. Every single thing before from the rap battles, me, the Funky Four, the Funky Four Plus One and the Furious Five created the rap battles. Understand what I'm saying? Right. That's my era. That's what I did. And I feel crazy, you know what I'm saying, telling people simply because when I tell people they think I got a problem. 
tell I'm them to do their homework there. Do their homework. Much respect to the hip-hop community. It's like when I tell people, oh, Shah Rock, Shah Rock, is, she's just being like extra. She just, I don't know why she's doing all this, you know what I'm saying? She ain't the first anyway with him. Prove who is and prove who was the female MC that was instrumental to men and women. I got proof. But Jeremy, you know what's so crazy? Huh. That even with proof, you still have some that like be trying to flip the story like I got a problem. Well, the only problem that I have, Jeremy, is that, listen, if you don't know my story, then you cannot dictate my story just like I can't dictate yours. But when you're saying that you are the first female MC of hip-hop culture, you're saying anything about my era that I ran them streets in New York, then you got to be clear on what you're saying because I am that person that was on the front line that stuck the, the uh you know, took put the electricity inside of those light light poles. I was that person that was feeling that electricity that you know nothing about. Right. I'm not saying you. I'm just saying people no, in general that speaking, try to dictate yeah. that don't know. And it's not everybody. It's not everybody, guys. I don't. I don't want to say that, but it's like I be feeling crazy, right? Because it's like, damn, I don't even. I don't even be like to tell my story because like, they. Why are you getting mad when it's something that I did? Well, I'll tell you. I I'll tell you like this, Shaw. Let me let me tell you this. You know, you, it, it's. I think what I'm hearing is that it sucks having to be your own best advocate when there's so many other witnesses to your story and to the history. But that's the great thing of a show like this. We're a multimedia yes. platform. We get to show uh, DMC explaining yes. how the entire Run DMC echo chamber comes from you. Yes. And just yes. let me tell you, they're not the only group that cop that style. Like a zillion yes. MCs, okay? So and, that's, and they don't even know where that comes from. They no. don't even well, know that Shaw Rock, even though you have some people using the echo chamber, that is what I'm known for. Right. They don't even know, besides me having the first record deal, right first authentic female with a record deal they don't even know that i'm the first female mc a part of an all male group and when someone comes to me and they say that's all i'm good for oh you just the first female mc a part of all male group no i was that mc that influenced male and females you understand what i'm saying right. i was that mc that was on the front line helping to push this this culture forward right i was the first mc Female MC that had an MC behind her name. You understand what I'm saying? Right, I'm right. the first female MC that started using MC. Right. 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 Okay, right. so let's talk about that. Hold on. We got we got more clips. We have so many clips <laughs> just to substantiate this. Right. So another clip we have um, is from... So uh, It's the Joint was a 1979 release. But we're just... Well, well 80. 80. That's a 1980, 1980 release. Okay, so perfect. So then we have... An actual video oh, performance. Yeah, yeah. I, think you can't... It, I think it was 81 because we sat on that contract for six months. So I think that's the joint was released in 81. Okay. Rockin and rockin House Even if it was so released 19... in 81, we know for a fact the performance we're about to play is from the kitchen in 1980. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to talk about that. Okay. So hold on. So, hold on. Let's hold on. Let's play it for everybody. This is 1980 Funky 4 Plus 1 at the kitchen. Uh, there's no other videos like it. So take it away. Got the modifications on terrain I won't fight a rhyme and I won't imitate Another MC when he's running down rhymes Cause at the time they just running down oh, rhymes But that's alright because oh, I know so oh. I put him in check and take his rep away You know my name is known from man to left Cause I'm a super fly guy with the mic in my hand My oh, name is known from C to C And when I'm on the mic I go and find a history I'm a mystical magical man on the mic When I run down the rhyme it will be a delight Cause I'm a mean machine, so what? that's the plan You see where the beat but there's a mic and rock all over the nation, I'll let you know that I'm a disco sensation. sensation. Rock, rock, y'all, uh, to the beat, and you don't quit. Uh, Come on, keep, uh, keep coming in a little bit. Check it out, y'all, you don't stop. And I hear you, I hear you. One, two. Well, I hear you, and to rock the scene. We gotta rap on the mic, make history with all the black girls yelling. Take me, I was walking down the block uh, by myself. Put my pants on my top, uh, and then uh, I fell. The pants I wore was a very nice. Uh, Green tone. Before I finish, let me tell you 
straight to the car at the road. Was it this in 98? I got in everywhere we go through. It's not that I need to start a box of booze. We turned around and we're late block back. And I went in the team out the box of black. We got so drunk, we got so high. That oh, that ended the ride. Didn't get hurt, you know. Shot Rob. Don't stop. Just get on your mind. When you're ready to rock. Because the sun won't shine, the rain won't stop. We oh, got the sound, you call Paul. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. get about the jail, stop the house. And we're back. I'm Jeremy B, yes. CEO yes. and founder of Listen Vision with my DJ, the one, the only. B dub the boy wonder. And we are hip hop in action, the actual radio, TV, global streaming show for the Hip Hop Museum. Speaking now on the line with hip hop's first female MC, Shah Rock. That's Jeez. right. Jeezy, can we get her back on the uh, screen there? Shah, I tell, see myself. Tell yeah. me tell me a little bit about uh, that clip that we just watched. Okay, so the clip that you just said, um, that you just showed, um, now we recorded our first song, Rapping and Rockin' House, under Enjoy Records in 1979, right? Like in November. So by, um, you know, the, the next year, you know, um, because we're going into the holiday, holidays, the next year, we're getting calls. We're getting calls from all over, from other people. Now, mind you, we were already playing down town in the Soho Soho areas like the Ritz, you know, of the Mud Club, the kitchen and, and all of that and all of those areas. So that specific clip is from 1980 in the mud I mean in the kitchen, right? right. So with that clip shows and you may hear people saying, oh you know, we was the first to take hip hop downtown. No. The funky four and the funky four plus one had already been downtown. We were already exposing hip hop culture to um, other nationalities, like the punk rock people. You know what I'm saying? Like right. Caucasian people. Right. That's what the funk because they loved us. Right. They loved the fact that um, how we harmonized and, and and they had a girl and we were you know taking them out of the element you know far as right. punk rockers. So the clip that you see shows and proves that in the beginning of '80, you know what I'm saying before anybody you know, could say anything, we were already exposing hip hop to places like the kitchen and the mud club and all that stuff. Cause, cause those were, those were punk rock parties, right? Well, let it me ask just you, cause what's asked stri- us to come down what, here and perform. It really strikes me though, like that, the audio and the video is bizarrely good quality on that. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. Somebody, somebody Why is that? I mean, it literally video. looks like, you know, television production, audio mm-hmm. and video, which mm-hmm. if you think about it, that's almost a statement in and of itself. If you're mm-hmm. going to take this genre of music that literally doesn't even barely exist yet in exactly. 1980, and you're going to have, you know, basically take them into the, you know, white people fancy club and give them exactly. all the audio, give them all the video. It's like that's recognition that we're witnessing right. something special. You know what I right. mean? Right. And the Funky Four and the Funky Four, the Funky Four, because I was a part of the original Funky Four first. I helped to create the Funky Four. And then I became a part of the plus one where I left. So let me give you a brief history like with, with um, the Funky Four, original member. For the audience that don't know, I helped create the Funky Four. So you had me, you had Raheem that later went on to the Furious Five to become a Furious Five. You had KK Rockwell and you had Keith Keith. Now prior to that, when I'm talking about the end of 77 when I came in, I was rhyming but we weren't yet the Funky Four yet. But I was still rhyming, right? So once Raheem came in, we created the Funky Four. So now we're the Funky Four. By 1979, Raheem left the group because of this group, this group or whatever. I left. I came back a month or two later. 
Raheem went on to the Furious Five, and I went on to become the plus one, and now we're the Funky Four plus one. So the thing is, is that uh-huh. when you talk about, you know, um, the rhyming, and you're talking about, you know, people t- taking hip hop down to, you know, to introduce it to other nationalities. The Funky Four did that first. We did that by ourselves because we were on the streets of New York City before we made records. So right. nobody would ever take the credit and should never take the credit that this is something that they did when we had did it already. And the proof is right there. You have the proof. You have the proof that in 1980, we was in the kitchen. That clip you have is in the kitchen. So this is before we just, we had just made our record in 79, right? November 79, we come to 80, we all over the place. We all over the place. We all downtown. Before, like before we even really went to Sugar Hill. And let me tell you why. Because we didn't sign our, uh, we didn't um, sign um, our contract with Sugar Hill until like six months later. You know what I'm saying? And then we wind up, you know, our song wind up coming out, I think like in 80, 80, 80 or 81 or something like that. You understand what I'm saying? That was, that's the joint. Which proved that even before the Sugar Hill um, era, we was already downtown. The footage shows it. The Funky Four did that. We were booking our own shows. So we were the first to bring hip hop culture to a different type of genre, different parties, different, um, you know, uh, uh, atmosphere of different nationalities. The Funky Four did that. Single, the Funky Four plus one did that single handedly before we even um, assigned over to Sugar Hill Records. So actually, did. this is a perfect segue. Because the footage is there to the footage is there to prove it. Yeah. So when I see to people and they get mad, they get mad. But hell, I'm, look, this is my only opportunity <laughs> that I might have to tell your your people. So people get mad because I say what you're saying is not true. You understand what I'm saying? So if you want to say anything about about the um, my era or hip hop in the era that I was in that I helped push forward. That I help assisted in creating, creating. Yeah. Then you gonna have to be clear about what you're saying because you're not going to take credit for the people that was on the ground floor. I mean, come on, they don't already make. They ain't making no money now. They ain't never made no money from it. Give them their history. Don't take that from them. Right. And, and that's why and I always of, argue. Right. Not even argue, but anybody know my character, Jeremy. Yeah. Anybody knows that I don't get into stuff like that. I don't do. I, I've always been about. You know, um, self-preservation has always been about making sure that we as females MCs be respected, right? But what I won't allow, and that's my problem because, like, I fight for everybody that come out, you know, of my era because I know their history. These people never made money from anything that they did. So don't try to take what dignity they have left. And that's what they did for the culture, whether or not you care or not. That's what I fight for. You cannot take that away from them and hone it as your own for you, so you can get paid for it. Because for me, it's not about the money. You see what I'm saying? Right. Keep it. It's about but the you, legacy. You can't take my history away from me. Right. That's all I'm asking you, and that's what some of the people in the Bronx. So when when people may say, okay, the Bronx mad, you know, because people came from the South, but this and that. Listen, for everybody that's out there in the South, I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. Born in Wilmington, North Carolina Went back to the South every year So I rock with the South Why? Because my family is down there But from the South is my journey It's my journey That allowed me to become The first female MC of hip hop culture So it's not about the South It's about owning and claiming What you did And everybody else Respect what you did And New York has done that the only problem is, is that New York would never allow somebody to take claim for something they didn't do when they was on that front line. Right. That's the problem. Well, let me, yeah, Jeremy, let, that's the problem. Let me ask you about something because uh, this subject that you just touched on is near and dear to our heart here because uh, Master G, the founding member of the Sugar Hill Gang, has a show uh-huh. here on WLVS Radio on really? Thursdays okay. at 5. Look, listen, and li- live. Uh, and... and he, uh, you know, at our grand opening on the 40th anniversary uh-huh. of uh, Rapper's Delight, you know, performed at the Hip Hop Museum's grand opening. And so mm-hmm. you made a perfect segue because from everything, all the stories he's told me, you know, 
he never got a penny. He never saw any money from Sugar Hill Records. And in wow, I thought they looked out for him. Sure. Okay. So let me tell you about this. And, and, and it's in my book, so I, 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 can, I can do that. I can do that. So when Master G told you that, of course, you know, we, were, we went on the first Sugar Hill, you know, tour with them. And so what I want to tell you to your audience, I had gotten a, a message, right? And I'm not going to. I'm not going to go back and forth, but I, I want to let y'all know how deep this is. I received the voicemail, right? So the voicemail said um, to me, you know, Shara, I don't know what you got going on over there. I don't know why you, you know, like, hey, you know, why are you doing this? We was all on tour together looking out for you. You was on that bus with, with us in Sugar Hill too. And if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for me, Sylvia would have never signed you to um, Sugar Hill. If it wasn't for me, you would have never had a record. And so the thing is, is that I have the voicemail, but I want to I wanna, um, let the audience know how deep this is and how deep this is, is because I don't understand why people don't understand why I'm going in hard. I, I've always respect every female, every female that's out here. I respect your hustle and I respect what you have did for the culture, right? But what I don't allow and what I won't allow is for you to disrespect another female or another group and act like everybody else has the problem. Who left that voicemail? Say what? Who left that voicemail? You figure that shit out. What? (laughs) Okay. But anyway, (laughs) but anyway, what I'm saying is that. Now people are coming at me like, well, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have got a record deal. But what they don't understand is that I was hot on the streets of New York before record deal. Before I came to Sugar Hill Records, I had a record deal. But what was your experience with Sugar Hill Records? Did you have a good or a bad experience? Okay, I'll tell you this. Well, as G say he didn't get paid, guess what? I'm the first one to file a class action lawsuit against Sugar Hill Records, right? And I brought in everybody on the class action lawsuit, right? So this is back in like 2000 and, no, this was like 1999 or something like that, 2001 when I started the lawsuit. So I asked everybody, I asked everybody from the sequence, right? I I took each member, I went to each member in each group, Crash Crew, Sequence, uh, who else? Um, The Furious Five. So I went to them. I say, look, I'm, I'm going to file this lawsuit. I just got back from Germany. I'm going to make sure that these people give us our money because I, I ain't never received a dime. Now, I'm just hearing that Master G ain't getting no money. But hell, they was the leading people on the leading tour that was handling the tour that should have got paid no matter what. But I ain't know that. So, damn, I feel sorry for them, too. But guess what? When I went to file that class action lawsuit that I did the search But every single body, every lawyer up in New York City would not touch them, right? Somebody in BMI, they was like, look, girl, I got you. I got you. Let me send you to somebody. I went to a Jewish lawyer downtown, and they say, look, whatever you do, um, you got to give us half. But I got you. And guess what? They had. So so I begin, and that's when I went in and got everybody. Nobody ain't want to do it. It was like, I ain't getting nobody. Nobody. I ain't getting no lawyer, no half. I said, well, hell, half. You ain't getting shit now. So why you wouldn't get them half? I said, okay, let me move on. So who signed on? The Funky Four. Who signed on? The Furious Five, right? So we we going back and forth in a lawsuit. And this is in my book. So yeah, it's part of the movie, but it's deeper than that. So I, I'll tell y'all. Just to let your audience know what I had to deal with. How I'm that chick that's on the front line that's always fighting for other people. You understand what I'm saying? To get what's rightfully theirs. Now, when we came into the game, we didn't know. Our parents didn't know. They didn't know how to school us as to how this business was, you know? So what happened was, okay, um, the only one that was a part of this lawsuit was me, um, the Funky Four, and the Furious Five. We went on. So from since 2004, we first went to court in 2004. One, right? Went back. In 2010, right, because the judge ordered them, Sugar Hill, to make an accounting of everything from, like, 2010, right? From 2010 on. 
no accounting no 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 um no no nothing saying that this song was so because yo them songs are still be say, selling and they're still playing and, and 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 we're going after publishing writers all that so the judge said okay look you know y'all want now you have to do an accounting for everything that was going you know going on thus far since 10 since 2010 when the judge ordered them to do the accounting what year is this right now germany 2019 jeremy huh 2019 so let your audience know I'm still in court right now. Wow. Yes. And guess what? Everybody that didn't want to sign on, including the girl groups and all this, came to me and said, we need your lawyer. Can your lawyer help us? I give them my lawyer's information, but because of something that they did and that's their business, my lawyer couldn't help them because they didn't jump on when I asked them to. Even though I think the Sugar Hill Gang, you correct me if, if I'm wrong, I think they may have used my lawyers. The Crash Crew came on the sound, and they're using my lawyers. I think it may be sweet. There's a lot of MCs that are using my lawyer to get their money. You understand? Wow. So the thing is, is that when people talk, and they talk like, you know, um, you know, like I'm the bad guy, you know, and I, I'm just like, because I'm, I'm hip hop. Or I come from the era, I look down on people because, um, you know, they're rappers. That's not the case. That's not the case. Because let me explain. The, the, the word rapper, can, we, were, we were MCs first, right? But when Sylvia and them took over and Sugar Hill took over in 1979, and when Bobby Robinson from Enjoy Records took over in 1979, they were from the old, you know, music industry. So they started calling us rappers. And that's how the rapping name came about in 1979 because they didn't understand the MC element. So Bobby Robinson and Joy Records and also Sugar, Sugar Hill Records was the one that started changing the way that the streets was. And that means MCs. Now we become rappers because they don't get the MC metaphor. They don't get that. So now you see rappers delight, you see rapping and rocking the house, you see, you know, the right, New, New York, the rappers, you know, or when they introduce us, they introduce us as rappers because Sugar Hill nor Enjoy understood the MC format of what we had in the streets. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And so that's what they did. And that's where that rapper stuff come out. So a lot of times I'll say MC because that's who I am first. Right. But I use MC rapper. You know why? Because I want people to know that I ain't just the MC of of uh, hip hop culture, but I'm also that rapper, first rapper of hip hop culture. Any way you want to slice it, I'm that chick. Well, I, wanna, so I, I say that humbly, huh? Yeah, I want to play a video. Actually, speaking of rappers, well, I think this is a video of MCs. But you know, the Us Girls. Uh, you know, you were in right. famously. You know, the movie Beat Street, one of the right, greatest. Right. You know, kind of most iconic hip hop movies and i'd like to show at least a clip uh first yes. first let's just show uh this clip of i think it's called us girls freestyling do you have that dz so this is this is really man some some original some original back in the day which uh, one you got okay well just let's just play it check this out this is you freestyling i'm gonna ask them a simple question they're gonna come out their face and try to talk about it's all about that did you that. the part when dad got on the phone and he was talking to the girl on the phone and he dissed her like that yeah. mother he wasn't talking <laughs> It's a woman's work. You got to give it what you got. And I'm sure part of people and I rated the rock. And if it want to be done, you got to give me what you got. My oh, fellas in the place that won't steal your bones. You got Good. to give it up or yeah. leave, leave it alone. So get ready for this. Get ready for this. The part of people in the place. Get ready for this. To you. So what you want to do? Or do you want to rock the house and turn this mother out? Fly girls, are you with us? And if you're ready to rock, to help me turn it out. Let the world know what we're talking about. The other ladies. Yeah, I want you to listen. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, ladies, yeah, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. watch out for the fellas. Yeah, that'll drive you crazy. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, look. 
Huh, that, I, so let me let me tell you let me tell you about that. Yeah, let me tell, tell you me. about that. I'm gonna give you a history on that, that right, one, please, that clip please. right there. And so much respect to videos because this shows. You understand what I'm saying? But let me tell you about that clip. Now that clip wasn't the us girls. That clip was before the us girls. And what happened was Lisa Lisa is like really like one of my close friends and she was the MC from Africa Bambada. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. No matter what in the Bronx, she is one of the females. You know what I'm saying? That no matter what, you know, she knows her history. She knows I'm the first. I know that she's the first, you know, female MC of, of the Zulu Nation. But we've always protected each other in, in our history. So what happened is that that time they called Lisa and I downtown to do uh, a BBC um, documentary that was for overseas, right? Oh. So we did it. And that what we did was right on spot. We made that up right on on the spot for the documentary for a London BBC, um, you know, out, out overseas. So when we did that, those other girls were from Lisa neighborhood. And we just did that. So that wasn't to us girls. Oh, so now with that, wow. with that clip, let me tell you what happened. With that clip, yeah. with that clip, it's overseas, right? It's yeah. in London. So you got a group that's called like um, Vice Grip or something like that, uh -huh. that um, model they self after the Funky Four, right? With three, four guys uh -huh. and a female uh -huh. MC. But they were performing my lyrics from this song or my lyrics, right? Overseas. Now, 2009. Um, you know, I get a call from one of the Zulu brothers, Ike C, from the um, from from uh, African band bond in the Zulu Nation. He say, "Shop, check it out." He said, um, "Congratulations on your your um, commercial." So I'm out of town. Like I said, what commercial? He said, "Well, you got you got a, a Missy Beach Missy Beachy commercial," and this is in 2009. I said, "Really?" I said, "I didn't do a commercial." So he said, "Shop, they use they got your voice on a new the new 2009 Missy Beachy commercial, and they running it." throughout the NBA finals, right? So I said, okay, I said, well, I'm out of town. Let me get back home. I, I'm, in, I'm in Dallas right now. Once I get back, I'm going to look at it. So sure enough, they use, even though that whole documentary that you see with me and Lisa going back and forth, they only use my voice, my voice to sell it to Missy, Missy Beachy to make a commercial. So now when I, I heard my voice, I know my rhyme, I heard my voice, I call my attorneys. Look, my attorneys say, look, Shara, you sure? I say, look, I, I know my voice. I know my rhyme. So they got on it. They got on it. I couldn't sue. Um, I couldn't sue um, Missy Beachy, but I sued the people for the money that Missy Beachy gave them. And guess what? Even though my voice was on there, I split all the money that I had with my homegirl Lisa Lee because that's what we do. Oh, that's, that's what we up. do. Yes, I did up. that. What year do you think that was? Um, that that was done probably like so it was before B Street. So I'll say like eighty. 82 well that's interesting yeah. 82 we all know you started in uh 77 78 you know right right and just right. to kind of uh you know this is just some more this whole show is just evidence so you remember paul yes. C, you remember paul c the say that again say that again say that again the whole show Would is you say the whole show is no. evidence okay all right okay, okay. all right so check this out so this is a test pressing that we have here on set you want to zoom in on this dz what does it say well, don't get me wrong. We love the sequence. We love Angie, you know, but all, oh, all due respect, sequence. you know, this is a 1982. Wait. Okay. Huh? So that's a 1982. No, yeah, but that Simon says you got to look at Funk You Up. You got to look because their first song was Funk You Up. So Simon Says is not. Simon Says is another song they did. Much respect, you know, because, you know, they did their thing. And, and, and they need to be commended, you know, for being the first rap female rap, rap group, group especially yeah. coming from the south yeah. especially coming from the south that did tremendous thing and did help open up you know the rap music in the industry they did that they need to be commended for that i used to say to both angie and cheryl out of respect because you, you're talking about it right. and say look ladies i said you know i'm, I'm rocking with y'all i'm rocking with y'all but i've always been an advocate for the mercedes ladies you know who um who was on those streets with me they were all female dj group right but the thing is is that i've always been right i say y'all man y'all need and they know i've said this to them i say y'all don't realize that y'all are the first female group out of the south 
Y'all not only represents the South, but you represent, I mean, you only represent Columbia, South Carolina, but y'all represent the South. Y'all represent the guys. Y'all represent, you know, y'all represent everybody coming from the South. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Y'all need to make sure that people know that. Yeah. But the thing is, is that all of this had be begun to start taking place. And you say that because I guess you're just like everybody else is want this to be dead, you know, and I just want everybody to understand. And if they don't understand, you know, those were my girls. There's there, there, those my girls, those family. We was out on that tour together. The first, you know, hip hop tour. The thing is, is that I was in the street, even if they went out on tour before me, it doesn't matter. I'm still the first female MC of hip hop culture, a culture, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of other people benefited off of. So even if you don't know me or you may have heard somebody else first before me, it doesn't matter. You benefited off of it because of me. The well, bottom line. One right? of the one of the so, main ways that I think a lot of America got to know you, you know, even though you were in the streets and even though you had singles out. You know, the Beat Street movie made a big impression. It did, it did, uh, it did, it did. And guess what? Genres. Guess what? Guess what, Jeremy? I don't even claim that. Let me tell you why. Because I claim it as a secondary thing. And, and, and I'm, I'm honored that Harry Belafonte allowed us to be in the movie. But I have to tell people that my beginning of hip hop started before 1984 in B Street. B Street is a plus, don't get me wrong, and I'm honored. Right. But the people don't know that I am that female that's a, the first female MC of hip hop culture. So when they see me with the us girls, they think of the us, girl, us girls. A lot of people don't even know that I started the Funky Four, helped create the Funky Four, and I was a part of the Funky Four Plus One until they start doing their research. So I don't even use B Street. I don't use us girls. I use what what um, made me who I was on that front line. And then everything that comes after, I'm proud. But I want people to know what I did for this culture. So I don't even never use that. No, I don't, I don't, see, I don't blame you. I don't never do it. You don't I, want I people to get confused. But at the same time, exactly. we have an obligation to show know, all aspects know, of your career. So let's and check I, it out just real quickly. I don't want to seem like I'm ungrateful. No, no, no. I don't want to seem like I'm ungrateful. It's just that I want people to know what I did for this culture. And even though, and, and like I say, even with me keep saying it over and over again, I want people to do I'm not trying to force feed anything to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, well, you got to listen to me because I'm the first female I'm seeing. That's not the way you do it. And that's not what hip hop about. I'm trying to just enlighten people to don't believe the hype. Don't believe a lot of things that these people saying that they did because I'm that chick that was on the front line doing it. And you could tell by the cassette tapes. You could tell by the videos. You could tell by the flyers. I have the proof. Well, and speaking of videos and flyers, DZ, you got that magazine cover of her? Let's show. Who? This is this is another recent recognition of your place in hip hop. This is the cover of uh, Compulsive magazine. Yes, yes, they did that. They did that. Look at that beautiful because picture. What, it was what a great that, picture that you know, is. From, 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 we have a young gentleman, I mean, a, a gentleman that writes for the Washington Post. You know what I'm saying? That he really got introduced to hip hop and really love hip hop. And 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 he's another person, Michael Freeman, just like you, Jeremy, you know, and, and our DJ right there. They want the true story to be told. So he's a part of the, you know, uh, the Washington Post, is writer for Washington Post. And he was like, listen, we have to stop this. People like Jay Kwan, you know, that, that know the deal. People like Fuji that know the deal, deal. People that's my consultant that know the deal. People like Fat Joe. What, um, DMC ain't the only one. Fat Joe tells the world what I meant to him. You understand right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And so it's like a gift and a curse. And don't get me wrong, for all of your audiences out there, it's like I'm caught in between, you know, a hard rock because it's like, you know, you're trying to tell your story. And when you tell your story, they get mad at you because they think you're showing, you throwing shade at them. When you say, nah, nah, it didn't happen like that. This is how it happened. And let me show you proof. But then they think you're showing shade and taking away from what they told you wasn't the truth right and so it's like what y'all want me to do this is my history well, so you want me to have y'all keep going on telling um stuff that's not true well there's that's enough evidence that's, that's not out fair there to me or yeah. hip -hop, huh? well luckily we have something called the internet 
and we have a lot of evidence, you know, to kind of back you but, up. But, and you have but, your memoir. Tell us about your your book because I feel like your yes. book does a good, you know, justice to your yes. story. Tell us if people want to buy it or get it. Tell us, tell them where we, they can find well, it. Well, 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 guys, um, I did the book back in 2010 when we won the lawsuit with Sugar Hill, the first round of the lawsuit, and so I wanted to be able to, to, to tell my story because my family was like, listen. You see all this stuff out here, you know, people not saying whatever, you know, the very few people that was following you, you know what I'm saying, that's not telling the story of the way it is, you know. So my, my thing is, okay, so I'm going to tell my own story and I'm going to tell the truth. And so I was always, you know, a law enforcement officer, you know, when I left New York, you know, and, and did what I had to do. And I had respected the, um, the, the, the agencies that I had been a part of. And so I didn't want to really come out at that time and do the movie. So everything was planned. Everything for me, I do strategic stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? I learned in New York, on the streets of New York, to market. I learned that. I learned that without social media. Shara, <laughs> let me tell y'all, for everybody listening, Shara had followers before Twitter had that little, that little blue, blue bird. I'm telling you the <laughs> truth. But all over the world. I had followers before Twitter had that blue bird. But I learned to market. And I know how to market. And I know how to gorilla market. So I waited. I waited because everybody has their story to tell. Everybody got their story to tell. But one thing that I will never allow is anybody to take a story of those people who have been on the front line for their blood, sweat, and tears and hone that story as they own where they knew nothing about it when they knew nothing about it and that's the only problem that new york had with anybody you know is claiming you know that um that that, that they was the first to do something that they they were not if you're the first to do it new york will back you up 100 and they did is because there- let me go back when you talk about um the sugar hill gang and you, you say you talk to master g um, one of the things that I talk about, like in in, in the, my book, but I won't do it in the um, the movie, is that like with the Sugar Hill Gang, New York, them MCs that was on the street and they heard that record, hell yeah, they was furious. But guess what? For any person that was under Sugar Hill Records and we heard the record, yeah, they was under Sugar Hill. Now we had um, the Funky Four had um, a record deal too. The only difference between that is that. Sugar Hill Market, the record's better. They had the capabilities of marketing it better than Enjoy did. This is why she sent the scout out to get us, to bring us over from Enjoy Records to Sugar Hill Records. A scout was sent to us from Enjoy Records, I mean, um, while we was under Enjoy, to try to get off Enjoy and come over to Sugar Hill. Wow. So when it's all right, and so when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, New York was never mad. The only thing that New York is upset about this any old heads that's on the street is that you cannot say nothing that you did not do, and you have to be truthful because they mad at that shit. Yeah, they ain't get paid. None of them out there, most of them out there, ain't get paid. So you think they want you to take the history away from them too? Right. That's like any. Right. That's, no, like that's California, all you got. That's Chicago, all you got. Yeah. anybody, like everybody around the world. If you knew that you was respectfully re- repping your city, and you was the first one in Cali, or first one in Chicago, or first one, you know, in Virginia, whatever, to do this, and then you have somebody that that's um in the limelight, or or maybe trying to get you know, attach themselves in a, in, in, in a time frame that they weren't there and try to take everything away from you and you know you didn't get paid from it. So now you want to take the history too? Is so there yes, a, we big up. We big yeah. up. Is there a Anybody. release date for the movie? Huh? Is there a release date yet for the movie? No, we haven't had a release date. We don't, we don't have a release date yet simply because, um, you know what, and, and for your audience that don't know, you talk about Dana Dane, and, and Dana Dane is one of my main, main writers, you know, from Brooklyn. And I tell everybody I brought him in because Dana Dane is a good writer. He understands. He gets hip-hop culture, even though he ain't from the the, the, um, the Bronx. He's being schooled by consultants, true hip, hip-hop historians like Charlie Rock from the Zulu Nation who knows what was going on at that time. Right. So, no, we don't have a release date yet because we're trying to really, you know, give a good product, you know, and a good movie to people that is demanding 
you know, um, to, to know what was really going on, especially for female MCs at that time. So we're really trying to bring something um, forward, another, you know, accolade to prove who I am and what I am. But the thing is, is, you know what? The information is out there and people like you, Jeremy, that that showing, you know, everybody who I am, you know, and, and what I did for this culture and, and, and bringing it on another scale or not. Now, whether or not they want to listen, it doesn't matter because it does not change who I am, you know, and I'm well, just if people really want to, people people want to get into it though, and I feel like if they yeah. want to book you, if they want uh, to have you speak on a panel, you know, where where would yes. be how if how do people uh, get a hold of you if you if they want to okay. book you in social media wise? So so much respect, much respect to people that haven't really seen me out there because besides me being into law enforcement guys, I was in the background educating in colleges around the world. So I have been doing this like for the last what seven, eight years, going to different colleges, educating them. So if you want to book Shah Rock, which this is what's happening right now. I'm just got several calls today from overseas, you know, that that want to be able to book you know, me over there. So I'll be, you know, trying to plan all the, the overseas tour touring right now. And this is one of the things that I'm excited about. But hit me up, MC Shah Rock, 1976 at gmail.com. I, I have that um I have that uh email address specifically for bookings. Tell me what you need and I got you. Okay. You know, and if, so if they right want to follow we'll, you we'll online, also. like Instagram, where can they find you? Yeah, I just got I just got on Instagram, guys. So yeah, I only got like four five out for what four thousand uh you know Instagram because I just got back on like about what a month ago. Uh -huh. So I am MC Shaw Rock. I am MC Shaw Rock on Instagram. Follow me. Listen, I need followers. <laughs> I ain't gonna go out there and for some stuff. I ain't gonna oh, do that. I'm genuine people. Oh, they're not people. real. They're not. They count that, for nothing. That pop culture, you know, and to know what Shot Rock is doing, you know. So shout out to Composer Magazine, you know that that one put that information around the world. We getting crazy hits. I'm, you know. So Instagram, Facebook. I, I guess I got a lot, lot of people, you know, that still following me, but I have more friends. I never wanted to create a fan page, y'all, and I. I that's one thing that I wasn't. I'm against because I don't believe in fans. What I do believe in is is um, the connection between me and um, the people that love hip hop. So I don't know if I have to do one later, but right now that is not something I want to do. I, I don't, I'm not. No, into just be, be yourself I'm because because the, the the last question we always ask every guest mm -hmm. is an important one because as the world's only hip hop museum. You know, we are fortunate to have the largest collection of uh, artifacts and memorabilia really? in the world. Mm -hmm. And we always close by asking you legends if there is anything unique or special in your closet or anywhere in your possession that you'd like to represent your music and career in the museum. I got you. I ain't going to tell you what it is, okay. but I got you and I get it to you. But listen, I want to send a shout out to New York City or anybody that don't know. On okay. June 1st, June 1st, yeah. the Bronx, the Bronx, May, June 1st, MC Shaw Rock Day thus far. Okay? So that's an accomplishment for me. That's an accomplishment for me. I mean, I, I thank New York because the Bronx get it. They get it. And they gave me that day. So June 1st, shout out to New York City. Shout out to everybody around the world. Chicago, California, you know, Virginia, you know, North Carolina, South Carolina. Oh, everybody that's rocking with me to make sure that people understand that I am the first female MC of hip hop coach and I'm not just saying it, okay? Okay, so what we want to do right now is first and foremost, we want to thank you because thank you. Uh, there are many, many who came after you who would mm -hmm. not be here uh, if it weren't for your style and your bravery, right? Thank you. I feel like being a, a woman in the late 70s and pioneering a brand new genre of music yes, is bra yes. is brave to a level that I can't even put into words. So we salute you. Thank we, you we, so much, we Jeremy. Thank you. Thank we, you. We love you. And trust me, our curator will be in touch with you to get some incredible piece to represent your legacy in the museum because that is no super problem. important. No problem. Okay. And, and I, pr I appreciate y'all and I appreciate all the media that has come together, you know, and, and trying to get that information out, you know. And, right. And I say this humbly to everybody. Listen, I love y'all. But um, just just rock me with me to get that information out there. And this is it's just true. I, I appreciate everybody. Well, we're Thank trying you. to get the story.
story straight, and uh, yes. we're going to close with one of the most iconic hip-hop movie scenes of all time. MC Shaw mm-hmm. Rock, Debbie D, Lisa Lee, in Beat Street. Shaw much Rock, respect. thank you so much for being with us. Love you guys. All right, Love take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, DJ. Thanks, DJ. <laughs> Okay, so let's close with this incredible movie scene that everyone's familiar with. Until next Friday at 5 p.m., I'm Jeremy Beaver, CEO and founder of Listen Vision and the Hip Hop Museum, with my DJ, the one, the only. Be of the boy wonder. And the last thing. Ow. I want, the, bye. And the last. <laughs> that was crazy. And the last thing we want to say is a big thank you and shout out to Joe Rivera at Artistic Ways, who created this laser etched hip-hop museum hat very cool very unique very different okay and uh a very one-of-a-kind item literally a one of one so that's artistic ways artistic with a k ways with a z on instagram shout out joe rivera but until next friday at five peace we're out of here Kenny, man, there goes uh, Shaw Rock, Lisa Lee, and Debbie D. Go get that record. Ah. Well, here's three ladies from our neighborhood. Guaranteed to rock the beat and rock the beat good. So come on, Debbie D, Shaw Rock, and Lisa Lee. Step up to the front so all your friends can see. We're all backing you up 100%. We know you practice all week. Now this is it. If you're in favor of what I've said, everybody say go ahead. With the magical touch I'm like burning fire You know I'm just too much I want to treat you like a king In the heat of the night Romance to the moon If your timing is right Get your back wet All soaked this wet He says I'm the kind of girl That he could never forget Jeez. Sophisticated It's the lady Lisa Lee To be the man in my life You got to be my only I'll always hold you secure And my arms real tight I Squeeze you real good Till you feel just right I have a heart of gold I want to share with you And give you the type of loving That you've never been through And if you dig where we're coming from Say yeah, yeah. And if you want to ride this part of the night, say yeah. yeah! Us, us, us! Us, us, us! Cause us girls can boogie too! We can dance, we can shake it! Cause us girls can boogie too! So come on girls, let's go break it! Us girls can boogie too! Shake it, cause us girls can boogie too.